scenario. Here you have a combination of sodium bicarb together with your sodium carbonate. Okay, now it will still follow the same process. Okay, just remember for your phenolphthalein and your methyl orange endpoint. Okay, let's write them down. Again, this is a mixture. So you have two components here totally independent from one another. Okay, so you have a portion there that's coming from your sodium bicarb and you have a portion there coming from your sodium carbonate. Your double titrator, ah, uh, sorry, double indicator titration is very useful for mixtures like this, as you saw in my previous video as well. Now, if you want to look for their percent purity in the sample, then you have, again, just a review, still use the formula percent purity times your volume times normality times your MEQ weight. All of them divided by the weight of the sample times 100. That's the formula for percent purity. Okay, now in this scenario, you already know the weight of your sample. So let's mark that as check. You already know the normality of your acid. That's 0.5, so check. All you need to know, therefore, is the volume and milliequivalent weight. Your milliequivalent weight, you can, that, you can get this from your compound. Whatever you're looking for in terms of purity, the MEQ weight should describe that substance. Now let's um, take a good look at what's happening when we're adding our acid. And again, I'd like to draw this one for easier vision or image. You have your burette. Not so good. I hope that's clear enough for you. It's a burette, okay. And you have here your conical flask. Not really gifted with drawing, by the way. So this is the best I could do. You have your conical flask. Again, you're dissolving a 1.2 gram sample of both your sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate, okay? And then for your titrator up top, you have your 0.5 normality HCl. Okay. Now, consider the first volume that you add. If this is the zero mark, you're draining 15 ml of your acid. So let's just imagine this is 15 ml. That's the first volume that you add, okay? And that's your phenolphthalein endpoint. So the, vo the volume for you to see the phenolphthalein endpoint is actually 15 ml according to this problem. And then you keep on adding, you add your methyl orange when you see your phenolphthalein changing from pink to colorless, you will stop. You read the volume, it's 15 ml. You add your second indicator, methyl orange, so it makes your solution yellow. You add more acid. You add more acid so that your methyl orange will change from this color. Okay, if you haven't seen my first video, please watch it as well. From yellow to pink, from basic to acidic color, okay? So here, you're looking for a pink color, and then you stop. And here in this case, it's 22 ml, the one that you added. So let's put it here. The volume for methyl orange is actually an additional of 22 ml. Okay, so how does this look like if you're writing it as a chemical reaction? Okay, let's take a good look. Actually, it's just a repeat of what we discussed before. So that's... Um, Put your sodium carbonate first here on this side. It's totally independent from your sodium bicarb. They're a mixture. And therefore, when you write them down side by side, it's easier for you to really compare what's going on. When you first add your acid, the first addition of your acid, again, the first acid that you add is 15 ml. What is really happening here is you need that volume in order for you to change your sodium carbonate to its half, neutral, half neutralized state, which is sodium bicarb. This is unaffected, okay? It still retains the same identity, sodium bicarb. 
So at this point, I hope it's clear to you, the HCL that you consume, which is 15 ml, is just enough for you to see the phenolphthalein endpoint, right? And your phenolphthalein endpoint will always visualize the formation of your sodium bicarb. Always remember that one. So for this part here, this is 15 ml. And again, you're not adding HCL here. The HCL is on this side. Okay, it still retains its identity, sodium bicarb. For the other one, it's in half neutralized state. So this is your half neutralization. Again, from a weak basic salt, it becomes more weak or weaker. So that, to indicate that one, let's put the word weak, weak base. Okay, so this is still basic. It can still further neutralize. It can still be neutralized. And that is by addition of your second volume of acid. So at this point, this is your phenolphthalein endpoint. Remember, the second half is now your complete neutralization. If this is the first half, half neutralization, to make it complete, you need another half. Okay, so at this point, it's completely neutralized to your sodium chloride. Same with your other side, it becomes sodium chloride. Notice, right? If this is 15 ml, this volume here is needed for you to convert only this side. It would make sense, therefore, that your second addition is greater in terms of volume. More is needed. More is needed. Since for this 22 ml, it's being shared by your original sodium bicarb and the bicarbonate form from your sodium carbonate. So this is the original compound. Basically, your sodium bicarb bicarbonate form from this and the original in your mixture they consume your 22 ml of acid. Okay, notice it's greater than the first. Now, if you are to look for the percent of percent purity of NaHCO3, that's your sodium bicarb, you will still follow the formula here. Now, what is the volume? That's the question. What's the volume? It's easy now. When you speak of sodium bicarbonate, you have to consider the original compound. Okay, they're independent. Again, they're independent from each other. So therefore, if you're looking for the purity of this substance from the sample, you have to focus on the original compound. Again, the volume that is needed from this point going to its fully neutralized salt, that's the volume, right? Now, the problem is you don't know what which volume right you want to focus on this side but you're quite confused maybe confused because this 15 ml is shared by them this 22 ml is shared by them so you have to isolate this box so how do you do that you know that your half neutralization here is 15 right your 15 here is actually this part so let's write that down this is actually 15 ml. Again, if the, if the up, upper part is 15, it would make sense that the second part here on the bottom is also 15. Right? This is also 15. If your sodium carbonate takes up 15 ml for it to become sodium bicarb, it also needs 15 ml from sodium bicarb to fully neutral salt NaCl. One half, one half. Okay? So therefore, right, do you see the, the tip here, the idea? This entire thing is actually 30, right? This entire thing is 30. So for your sodium carbonate, it's easy. The volume that you, you'll be using for your sodium bicarb is actually 15 plus 15. So that would be 30 ml times your 0.5 normality here one here here times your meq8 for sodium carbonate again sodium carbonate the molecular weight is 106 
divided by 2 sine times 1000 divided by the weight which is 1.2 grams times 100. Kindly do it in your calculator if you have one. You should be getting a number which is 66.25%. Okay, so now we'll go back to your sodium bicarb. You want to isolate the volume needed from this side for this side only. They're completely independent. Since now you know, okay, now you know that this is 15 and this is 15, how do you solve for this side? What do you think? It's easy, right? Remember, there is no acid here. No acid, no acid. Sodium bicarb, still sodium bicarb, right? And therefore, the HCl that you consume is actually on this bottom portion only, right? And since this bottom portion is 22 ml, let me mark that for you. The entire of this is 22 ml and you want to isolate this side, you don't want this you know it's 15 so now for your sodium bicarb it would make sense that the volume is 22 minus 15 ml right the entire bottom is 22 ml you don't want this volume here you're just focused on your sodium bicarb therefore you have to remove 15 from 22 so 22 minus 15 ml that's the volume here so still the same you just have to multiply that by 0.5. Again, this is normality. Your sodium bicarb, the molecular weight of this one is 23 plus your hydrogen 1 plus your 12 carbon, 3 oxygens, so 3 times 16, you'll be getting 84. 84. So if this is sodium plus one, you have one subscript. That would make sense, no? That you are using one as your equivalent times 1,000. And then you divide the whole thing by 1.2 grams times 100, since it's in percentage. And you should be getting a number which is, let me see. Twenty four point five per cent. There. Sorry. So, therefore, you need okay, you need the volume you, you have given it. Okay, so it's 22 minus 15. Okay, this is 7. So, now your answer here is sodium bicarb is 24.5 per cent, and for your sodium carbonate, it's 66.25 per cent. Now, I want you to remember this because one of my students actually pointed this one out and I'm really proud of them, by the way. There is this kind of rule, okay? If you are having a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate, remember, you can't have sodium hydroxide and sodium bicarbonate. It's always either sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate or sodium carbonate and sodium bicarb so there's two possibilities again sodium carbonate plus your sodium bicarb sodium carbonate plus your sodium bicarbonate there are two possibilities in terms of mixture if this is the case you have a strong base and a weak basic salt again if we go back to our example here okay notice that the volume needed for phenolphthalein endpoint is greater than the volume needed for your methyl orange always remember that one if it's NaOH your sodium hydroxide plus sodium carbonate so let's go here the volume for your phenolphthalein endpoint needed the, the the acid the acid that is needed for
for you to achieve your phenolphthalein endpoint in terms of volume, okay, is greater than the volume that is used by your methyl orange endpoint. Since the volume that you use here in your phenolphthalein, the first part, is enough to fully neutralize this one and to half neutralize this one. And this one, the second addition, is just enough for you to complete the neutralization of sodium carbonate. That's why it's always lesser than this and this one is always greater. If it's sodium carbonate plus sodium bicarb in this scenario here, notice the volume needed for phenolphthalein endpoint is less compared to your methyl orange. Why? Because on the first addition, the HCl, the acid that you need, is just enough for you to convert your sodium carbonate to sodium bicarbonate. While the second addition, it's the one needed for you to complete the neutralization for the original sodium bicarb plus the one formed from your sodium carbonate. So you're actually doing two jobs here on the second half to neutralize the original sodium bicarb and to neutralize the one formed from your sodium carbonate. Therefore, it would make sense that the volume of phenolphthalein and the volume of the acid needed for phenolphthalein endpoint here is actually less than your methyl orange endpoint. So I hope that was clear to you. If you think there's something else that I need to explain, let me know so that we could discuss it. Thank you for listening.